For RCRTV, I'm Joey Jackson. I'm here with George Alamil of GE Energy. And so, George, tell me where we are right now. We're in Plano, Texas. We're inside GE Critical Power Facility. This is the location where we design and test uh, critical power components and uh, systems for telecom, data centers, and what have you. And most people don't think of GE as a telecom company. Tell me how you fit in with the telecom space. All equipment, including central offices, need power. And that's what we do, especially the critical power. So we provide, uh, on the component side, we design and manufacture uh, DC-DC switch power supplies and AC-DC switch power supplies. But we also provide DC systems and AC systems to provide the uh, power need that the central offices and data centers need today. And what would you say GE Energy's mission statement is? Well, to provide error-free products to customers on time, every time. And what, what are we going to take a look at today um, on our tour? Well, the part that I like the most about my job is working in the lab. So we're going to take you to the labs where you will see people uh, hands-on testing components and systems and see how well they're working. And uh, when their job is finished, those products move to the qualification section, which Arjee will show you, and that's where they get environmentally stressed to see how reliable they're going to be. All right, well, let's go take a look. Let's do it. All right. So Joey, why don't we do this? Let's go into this lab where we design the smallest components uh, for power. And we refer to this lab as the point of load lab. And right here is a sample of our products. Uh, everything from uh, 3 amps all the way to 170 amps. And basically what happened on a motherboard, for example, as we're showing there, if you have a processor or a memory chip, you need DC power for it. Uh, depending on the power level that you need, these point of loads will do uh, perfect. So a customer will place the point of load in front of their processor, and whether it's one volt or five volt, the, power, uh, the point of load will deliver the current needed to power that uh, component. Now we're in the mechanical lab and there's a lot of cool stuff going on here. Just t take me through what we got going on. Well quickly, these products we talked about that we design, our mechanical engineers need to show customer data at different ambient temperatures. So some customers operate at 70 degrees C, some operate at 50 degrees C. So what our guys do using a wind tunnel testing that I will show you is to provide de-rating curve for the customer that tells them this is how much power you can get at this ambient temperature if you have this airflow and we are on 200 feet per minute, 400 and 800 feet per minute for each test. Let's go check out this wind tunnel. Let's go check out this wind tunnel. So a product is placed in the test section of this vertical wind tunnel so the computer will control the ambient temperature, it will control the airflow and Basically, it identifies a safety temperature that the, the power level that this product can deliver at a safety temperature uh, required for those components. All right, so George, we're here in the magnetic lab. Tell me what goes on in here. Okay, well, in this lab, we do analysis, we do studies, and we also design magnetic components for the DC-DC switch power supplies, switch mode power supplies. What I want to show you is this is the kind of components that our people do, from large ones to very small ones like these, which go into our point of load type of product. And this is an example of the kind of analysis using ANSYS and the kind of a testing that our guys do in this lab. So tell me what type of engineers you're looking for and what type of people you hire. Well, we employ four uh, different type of design engineers. One are mechanical engineers who put the system together. We have electrical designers who actually do the circuits for the uh, uh, conversion that I had talked to you about, the modules and the rectifiers. We also hire magnetic designers who design the magnetic uh, components that go into these rectifiers. But uh, also we hire software engineers who basically design controllers and they design the software that monitor and control these rectifiers. So 
So this is our environmental testing area. So we run products through different stresses. So one test we run is called high temperature operating bias. So basically running it at high temperature for 1000 hours. So we take samples from our manufacturing, put it in these chambers and run them. And if they run through the test, fine, no problem. If not, again, we troubleshoot the product, see what failed and we fix it and then make design changes as necessary to make our products more reliable. Here is our product. This is what we design and we manufacture. And these are test sockets to interface this to the equipment over there under test. And these are thermocouples that measure the temperature while the test is uh, going on. We want to make sure that the temperatures are not exceeded because when temperatures are exceeded, the product tends to be less reliable. So we keep it cool. What I'm showing you here is the EMI chamber. And uh, so actually, if you come this way, I can show you the inside of it. Actually, there's a test in progress right now, oh, okay. uh, which is perfect. Uh, this is Angelo Pirelli, he is uh, our EMC engineer. Hi. Hi guys. So Angelo is actually running some tests and actually if you can see on that screen down there, there's a test going on right now as we speak. Uh, there's a piece of equipment that is being tested. Uh, Angelo is actually doing uh, EMI testing, radiated EMI. So this antenna is actually picking up from the, the waveforms and he's able to sit here control the equipment, take the readings, and it's all happening over there. So now we are back at the EMI chamber, and the test is complete, so we can actually go in and take a look at what's inside this chamber. Yeah, let's check it out. Chamber. Oh, wow, look at this. Yeah. This is like a work of art in here. Yeah, so this is actually simulating an open field, you know, so we want to make sure that external interference is not coming into this chamber while measurements are being done. You know, so we close the chamber and take measurements. So you got a ground plane that's copper plane, and then you got that kind of material behind uh, you know, this uh, white stuff. The only reason the white stuff is there just to make the chamber more bright. Yeah. But that's kind of what's behind it. It's, it's ferrite material. Mm -hmm. I don't know, walk, walk me around as, as far as uh, what So this is an antenna, is. and uh, it's actually doing a test that we call um, uh, radiated emissions, okay? So the unit's powered up and is being rotated. The table actually rotates, and this antenna moves up and down, and it's actually taking measurements about uh, the radiated frequencies. Today's episode is brought to you by Telecom Careers, the number one global telecom and wireless job board, telecomcareers.net.